Hey everyone, how's it going? This is my first video on my um, uh, brand new uh, Mac, MacBook Pro that I just got days ago. Um, if people don't know me, I'm just a guy who I like to teach on the internet, theology, apologetics. Um, I passed some online courses in biblical studies. Um, I attended about two semesters in systematic theology, so I like to teach things that I learn and stuff like that. And I wanted to talk about uh, how to do Christian apologetics, because there's, you know, you're going to hear a lot of different opinions, and everyone, real, you know, true Christians want to stay biblical. And we need to stay true to the scriptures in everything that we do when we're defending the Christian faith, like 1 Peter 3.15 commands us to. And so many apologists um, make the error of not starting with God. Um, you need to start with your theology. And everything that you do has to come from your theology. And so um, depending on what opposition you're uh, going up against, you um, you want to do an internal critique of the, the um, non-Christian position, show them why it's wrong, um, give the defense for God's word. Um, so there's different methodologies, and I am what you would call a presuppositionalist. And there's a lot of misunderstanding about what presuppositionalism is. There's some different branches, there's, you know, certain emphases and certain um, uh, big names who have taught it. And um, one uh, misunderstanding uh, is I am not against, I am not against the use of evidences, okay? Um, and I know there, people criticize the um presuppositional uh, position methodology um, by using Acts 17 out of context. There's a very, very good discussion in uh, Always Ready by Greg Bonson. Fantastic book on how to teach you how to do apologetics. Also, uh, Greg Bonson, Against All Opposition, um, a new work. So um, there's people who use John uh, 1411, uh, but it's not in any way against the presuppositional uh, methodology of um, doing apologetics. So <clears throat> any apologetic methodology that causes you to not want to believe in the clear meaning of Scripture is dangerous. Okay, I'll say that again. Any apologetic methodology that causes you to not want to believe the clear meaning of Scripture is dangerous. Without certainty, there can only be mere probability. And mere probability gives the non-believer an excuse, and that isn't biblical. Um, I watched the debate, uh, R.C. Sproul versus Greg Bonson. Um, R.C. Sproul admitted no one has done a better job in exposing the weakness in non-Christian worldviews better than presuppos the presuppositional school of apologetics. But he also stated that he believes that we cannot have philosophical certainty of the Bible being true. Um, the Bible says, it tells us that we can have certainty um, that the Bible is true in Acts 2.36, uh, 1 John 5.13. Uh, so we can have certainty and so it only logically follows that if we can, if, if um, we're to do what the Bible says um, in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, um, that just leads us to, um, to, now if we do that, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, that only leads us to acknowledge that we are under the Lordship of Christ 
And we can have certainty because the Bible teaches that. And that only logically leads to the presuppositional methodology of apologetics. People try to um, pretend there is neutrality, and that's not what the Bible teaches. The non-believer is suppressing the truth of God. They have a bias. They don't want to believe. They love their sins, like Romans 1 teaches. So there's that, and people accuse presuppositionalists of um, circular reasoning, because we start with God, and the Bible is our ultimate authority. Um But in ultimate questions, circular reasoning cannot be avoided. And I'll show you how. And this is from Greg Bonson's work, um, Against All Opposition. Um, people have authorities, why they believe, what they believe. But they try to call out Christians for making the Bible their authority. Bonson points out that when a non-believer says, you can't make the Bible your authority, you can reply and say, yeah, I can. Just like you're trying to make logic your ultimate authority and still try to be logical. So in ultimate questions, circular arguments are necessary. For example, the use of reason is used to prove the reality of reason and logic is used to prove the constancy of logic. If someone says, this is my ultimate authority, Catch this. If someone says this is my ultimate authority and you know and, and you say, how can you prove it? And if the person says, I'll prove it by appealing to this over here, then the first claim of the person's ultimate authority really wasn't their ultimate authority um, because they're jumping to something else. Why they believe that's true. OK, so it's a matter of um, a non-believer suppressing the truth like Romans 1 says. Romans 1 is one of the biggest apologetics um, that we can give to a non-believer. Um, that's the reason it gets to the heart of the problem. Romans 1 18 to 32. The non-believer makes themselves a fool. They're suppressing the truth of God because they have a bias because they love their sins. Okay so the unbeliever is not neutral and uh, it's not that the non-believer just needs more evidence, okay? Um, so the difference between a presuppositionalist using evidence and a non-presuppositionalist is, is the way we use the evidence. The evidence is not our ultimate authority. Um, Dr. Greg Bonson says these words, when you're tempted to think, we got to give up our biblical distinctiveness so everyone has to be neutral. Keep in mind, they are not neutral and you should not be. The reason they would like you to, the reason they would like you to think you are neutral is that it is one of the ways in which they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They know God, but this is one of the ways in which they don't have to face up to God. Uh, Bonson also says when the non-believer wants you to be neutral, he is trying to neutralize you, to take away your worldview and then continue using his own, which amounts to winning the, the debate by default. Heads I win, tails you lose. Bonson also says the fool does not really want to find the truth. He only wants to be self-justified in his own imaginations. Now, end of quote. Consider this. Um, we know that there are scientists who are Christians um, who graduated from non-Christian uh, schools, accredited um, universities. There are Christians and non-Christian scientists with equal degrees. Okay. And we all have the same evidence but the non-believer, well, we all have the same evidences, but we all interpret the evidences in light of our starting point, in light of our worldviews. Everyone has a worldview, no matter what anyone tells you. A, um, how they view the world, 
how they see everything. So if you have the starting point of a naturalist, that nothing spiritual exists, well, then you're going to have to um, always interpret the evidence in light of that. And so we have, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, starting from verse 18, the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Um, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the understanding of those who have understanding, I will confound. Where is the wise person? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God not made the foolish has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of the world, uh, sorry, since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. God was pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, uh, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to Jews a stumbling block, stumbling block and to Gentiles foolishness but to those who are called both Jew and Greek uh, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God for the foolishness of God is wiser than mankind and the weakness of God is stronger than mankind for consider your calling brothers and sisters that there were not many wise according to the flesh not many mighty not many mo noble but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. So we see here that... Um, the gospel is appears foolish to the unregenerate person. Um, the unregenerate person is going to look at the Bible and say, you know, this is complete and total nonsense. The non-believer is going to uh, feel that, uh, think that way. And so we have to recognize that unless God regenerates a person to believe, that person is not going to believe. And obviously, I'm Reformed. And um, I think that's why most people Reformed um, are presuppositionalists, from my understanding. I know some go to classical, but uh, the methodology I'm talking about. But um, Reformed theology, if you understand it and you're consistent, it's going to lead you to a presuppositional worldview. Um, so good to keep that in mind now where am I okay so where did I want to go with this there are some other good books like how do we know the Bible is true one and two um, and replacing Darwin made simple I didn't grab that one but um that one in Glass House, Shattering the Myth of Evolution. Good stuff. Um, world Religions and Cults. Um, it's a presuppositional. People who wrote this are presuppositionalists. Um, it gets into all different types of uh, world religions, a three-volume set. Every Thought Captive, Richard Pratt. It's a simple book for beginners. Ultimate Proof of Creation by Dr. Jason Lyle. And so I wanted to actually... Um, where was it? Page 58. Second here. 
And uh, if you ever seen that famous debate, Greg Bonson, where um, uh, there was cross examination and um, uh, Greg Bonson got to uh, he got Gordon Stein to admit that um, the laws of logic are not um, material. OK, and then and, and then when Bonson was being cross examined, um, Gordon Stein asked Bonson uh, names, you know, name something that exists that's immaterial. And he said the laws of logic. So uh, and then some people, they try to get around that. Um, I like how Dr. Lyle on page 58, Ultimate Proof of Creation, he says, some have said the laws of logic are descriptions of how the brain thinks. But if this were true, then why would we need laws of logic to correct the way the brain thinks? If laws of logic simply describe how people think, then no one could ever violate a law of logic since people ne necessarily think the way they think. As with, um, and then he goes on, as with the other uh, Responses, laws of logic would lose their law-like power to govern, to govern correct reasoning if they were mere descriptions of, of thought process. So interesting. Um, that is, you know, in, in that debate, I would recommend it. Uh, Greg Bonson versus Gordon Stein. Um, and, and Dr. Jason Lyle, he's actually an astrophysicist. Um, he points out, quote, we must interpret what we observe in the world in light of what God has said in his word. And of quote, Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay. So presuppositionalism, that whole system of thought, is just taking the biblical worldview to its logical, logical conclusion in every area of thought. Um, the Bible says that we're supposed to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So, I mean, it's, it's just where the biblical worldview logically leads is is what is modernly called presuppositionalism. Um, and good thing to remember, um, for instance, when an atheist attacks God's morality, um, you should point out to them that they have no moral absolutes in their worldview. Uh, famous Richard Dawkins, famous atheist, he said there is no good or evil. Okay, so um, atheists are very uh, much so they like to attack God on a moral level. And um, so we need to critique their worldview and um, show them the inconsistencies in their worldview. Show them that in the atheist worldview, there are no moral absolutes if we're just chemicals reacting to chemicals. Okay, so um, so the atheist has no basis to say that anything is truly good or bad or evil. Um, and so when they do that, when they when they do that, they are borrowing from God because God is the one who declares what's right and wrong. Okay, um, good and evil, that comes from God. And so we need to, they, they steal from the biblical worldview because they have no basis to do so in their own worldview. So we need to point that out. Um, like I said, we do an internal critique of the, of the, the non-Christian's worldview. We want to get to the gospel, though, give a defense for the gospel. Um so there are good ministries out there, um, like uh, Dr. James White, who is a presuppositionalist. He has a podcast on YouTube called The Dividing Line. 
um, his website, aomin.org, Alpha and Omega Ministries. Um, there's also answersingenesis.org. Fantastic ministry. They have um, scientists on their staff who are, uh, who are Christians. And let me just see if I covered everything I wanted to cover. And so, you know, like I said earlier, that, that's a concern of mine, um, that any apologetic methodology that causes someone to not want to believe the clear meaning of, of the scriptures is dangerous. Um, that's ridiculous. To, to defend a certain philosophical system of thought when it's contrary to the Bible and do so in the name of defending the Bible. And specifically what I'm referring to is you'll see evidentialists or classical, they don't want to believe that we can have certainty because that is the soul of, um, I mean, that's the very heart of what it means to be a presuppositionalist. Um, Acts 2.36, it says, know with certainty, certainty. Um, so we can have certainty. Um, we don't pretend that there is neutrality, again, because it's not a matter of the non-believer needing more evidence. And again, we have no problem with presenting evidences, but that's not the reason a person um, is not coming to faith. It's because they don't have enough evidence. Um, God uses means and um, we can use, we could mention evidences. There's nothing wrong about doing that, but we have to recognize the big picture and the heart of the matter, and the heart of the matter, as I mentioned, is in Romans 1, 18 to 32. It's not that um, the person is uh, um, non by the, per the, the, the non-Christian is biased. Once they start being revealed the who God is from the scriptures, okay, they don't want that kind of a God. They, they are truth suppressors, okay? And that can manifest in so many different ways. Um, that can manifest in, in atheism, and it can manifest in religious ways by believing in um, different gods that whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you feel good, um, whatever helps you to feel better living in the sins that you're living in, even though, you know, so they, the, the non-believer suppresses the knowledge of God, of who the real true God really is. And how do we know that? Well, he's revealed his character in his word. Okay. So um, with those books, I mean, and, check out those ministries that I mentioned and you will really educate yourself highly and um, understand um, you will be prepared to know how to um, defend the Bible in a biblical way and um, there's other apologists out there who make the error of taking human philosophy and bringing that into the Bible. And um, that's always uh, error. That's always, it's wrong to do that. And you don't want to do that. You want to, like I said, we have to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ because the Bible says that. 
And if we're doing that, then um, we have to start with our theology from what the Bible actually teaches. And we start from there and we don't accept anything that's contrary to that. And that's the way we do apologetics. We do apologetics biblically. Okay. And that is the, by you not wanting to believe certain portions of the Bible because you, you want to do things because you like a certain methodology and you're going to do whatever you can to defend that methodology. I should have shut that off, <laughs> but um, that's idolatry. And that is where, that is where a uh, precept, that is where um, um, wrong methodology leads to. So that'll be it for now. Um, check out those books. That's it.